Hi everyone, this is Burgundy Michelli. Welcome to another episode of the Yoga Happiness Podcast. Today I'm interviewing Elizabeth Miller. She's the founder of Read in Yoga here in Columbus, Ohio. It's a wonderful little space. She and I actually had our discussion in her space. It's very comfortable. Uh, Elizabeth is a certified yoga therapist and she teaches group and private lessons in the Vinny yoga tradition. She also is, uh, she provides Thai yoga massage and she teaches and trains Thai yoga massage. I will let the rest of our interview speak for itself. Enjoy. Hello. I'm Elizabeth Miller. Fantastic. I am Elizabeth Miller. <laughs> See, at least it's in, easy this, enough. in this version <laughs> yes. of life, I am Elizabeth Miller. Fantastic. <laughs> and the name of, so would you, are you call? do you call this a yoga studio? No, I call this a yoga school. Fantastic. And yeah. it is yeah. read and in is yoga. Read in. Mm-hmm. Yep. Read in yoga. And um, we do Vini yoga and Thai yoga massage. What's here. Vini yoga? Vini yoga. So Vini yoga is all one word and it's a particular... Uh, tradition of yoga that comes from Krishnamacharya and Krishnamacharya's son, TKV Desikachar, who has recently in the last couple of years passed away. Mm-hmm. And then the, this lineage for me, uh, Desikachar had many students, but um, Desikachar's student, Gary Craftso, is my teacher. I see. So Krishnamacharya, Desikachar, Gary Elizabeth Miller. Fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah. cool that you can yeah. that you yeah. can trace that. Yeah, yeah. And so so the V and the Ni, again, it's all one word, Vini Yoga. And I suppose if we were pronouncing it correctly in Sanskrit, it would be Vini Yoga. Vini, yeah. Nobody says that. Um, we just say Vini Yoga. <laughs> right. Which is not from, as we always have to say, it's not from some dude in Brooklyn. It's not Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I do have a cousin named Vinny. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. exactly. It's not Vinny's yoga. It's, yep. uh, it's Vinny yoga. And um, the, the V and the knee, more or less, it means the appropriate application of the tools of yoga. Wow. Yeah, pretty what cool. What a concept. Yeah, yeah, pretty <laughs> cool. So, so you can certainly teach group classes of Vinny yoga classes, Um but they tend to be around a specific topic. Like the classes that I'm offering here right now are uh, yoga therapy for better back health. Mm -hmm. So everyone that comes in has a specific um, notion of what the class is going to be about uh, based on on the condition. And that's a yoga therapy aspect is that the difference between, this will be a very circular conversation, I'm sure. And so the main difference between what a yoga teacher does and what a yoga therapist does is that the yoga teacher is duh, teaching yoga. Right? right. That's what we do. We teach yoga. Right. And the yoga therapist teaches the individual or group of individuals based on a common condition. Mm-hmm. So you could have yoga therapy for heart disease. You could have yoga therapy for depression. You could have yoga therapy for scoliosis. You know, all these different sorts of things. And so, so that's why... Vinny yoga in particular lends itself very well to yoga therapy because we're taught from the beginning as teachers to to use the tools of yoga for the person that's practicing, not trying to put, okay, this is this is Uttanasana, so we're going to try to make all 30 people in the room <laughs> look like this because right. there's 30 different bodies. And so we we say, okay, let's let's look at what the function of Uttanasana is and then and then talk about how that is for your body. That's great. Yeah, it's awesome. And recently, within the past couple of years, Yoga Alliance made a big push specifically to separate and make sure that people indicating themselves as yoga therapists were completely separated out from... Yes, yes. which was a smart yoga. and wonderful yes. good thing to do. And in fact, it just recently met the... New, newish president of, of Yoga Alliance. He's a really cool dude. I'm excited for yeah. the changes. Yeah, he's a really, his name's David, I think, and, and he was at a conference that I was at um, in September, which was an all Desika Char lineage conference. It's like the, a niche of a niche, which yeah. we're all like totally geeking out with one another about <laughs> this. And, and he was there, and he was there as, as a, not as a presenter, but just there as a, as a participant, and 
Um, he was just really into it. And so Yoga Alliance has separated out. And, and so that has allowed the International Association of Yoga Therapists, IAYT, to really kind of step forward and say, okay, this is what yoga, excuse me, this is what yoga therapy is versus this is what yoga teaching is, which yeah. has been fantastic and, yeah. and good. That's so. great. Much to, I'm sure, many people's dismay because it's a little, you know, you know, whenever we have change like that, change is always... Parinama change. Always, yeah. Always, always, always <laughs> yeah. switching it up for us. Some change we're like, yes, and some change we're like, no. No. <laughs> no not with my personal agenda. Right, right, exactly, yes. <laughs> right, yes. So. Um, yeah, well, and, and I, I agree. I think that the changes going on in yoga are important because it's body work. You're, you're, you're working with people's um, everything. I mean, it's, it's body work, it's mind work and people are strong, but they're also delicate beings. I mean, you have to be careful with this being, um, because they may not be careful for themselves. And they so you may have not to be, be aware of yeah. how to be careful with themselves. And so right. that's part of our job as, as a therapist for sure. And if you are a um, well-trained and, and dedicated and experienced teacher, you can, you can see that as, as well, that, that part of what it is in, is telling people that's not right for you, yeah. which no one wants to ever hear. Right. You know, that's why I love my hairdresser so much is she's very, <laughs> she's very clear with me. She's like, that's not for you, Elizabeth. That you can't work. have bangs. You can't, you know, whatever you have yeah. really thick hair, you know, a little, whatever cut is going to look ridiculous on you. And yes. I appreciate that about her, yes. but there's this tendency, I think in all of us to be like, Oh, you can do it. You can do whatever you want. And you know, which just is, not as strong as being able to say that actually that's not for you. That's, yeah. This is not for you. You know, you're, you're eight and a half months pregnant. Inversion's not a good idea. Right. I'll just flat out tell you, <laughs> not a good idea. Yeah. You can do it. Go for it. But I won't, I won't say that it's a, I won't tell you that it's a good thing for right. you. We're going, we're doing, we're doing a panavayu at that point. A panavayu is down and out, not up and in. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. That's what your body is ready for at that point. Right. right. Yeah. Um, so then tell me about the Thai yoga massage. What, okay. what is it? Yes. So Thai massage is something entirely different um, than yoga therapy. Uh, those are just, I happen as Elizabeth Miller to be interested in both of those things mm -hmm. so they don't have inherently I mean other than they're both a a, a, a form we should say of, of yoga but they are totally different from one another so Thai massage is something and Thai yoga massage Thai massage Thai body work Thai partner yoga they're all the same term I mean they all reference the same thing they're not different things so so it is a form of body work that is native to Thailand um, in that region of the world, there's a lot of different uh, forms of body work that are similar to it. So there'd be, you know, something from Laos that would be similar. And this comes from more or less what the people did to take care of one another. And mm. so the the history, the the like the way back kind of uh, um, murky history is that this came from. Um, one of the Buddha's physicians. And so this is, it's steeped in Buddhism. It's not any more part of Buddhism than it's part of yoga. You know, it's not that it's a, a Buddhist form of, of body work, but that just happened to be the culture that it, it came out of. And so the, the idea is that Thai massage uh, came from a, a way to help the monks sit longer in meditation. So the more um, comfortable they were in their bodies, the longer they could sit. And so then therefore reach enlightenment and, and all of these things. And so so the, the network of energy lines that we talk about in Thai massage, I'm getting around to actually answering your question. That's fine. <laughs> you are answering the question. I love it. The, the network of energy lines in the body, um, we call them the sen in, in Thai massage. And it's similar to like the meridians in Chinese medicine or the nadis in yoga. They're very, the, the words are, are cognates of one another in, in terms of yoga. We call sen sumana and it'd be the shushumnas that is the 
is the nadi in, in yoga. So, so what we're working on in Thai massages is, is moving the body and pressing and releasing along those energy lines so that there's a greater flow of energy in the body. And that will affect us at all the different levels, at our physical level, at our emotional level, at our mental level. And usually, you know, this is one of those things where, where it'd be great if we could have someone that had this wonderful science mind do a whole bunch of, of, of uh, tests and, and run through and show us scientifically that this happened. But the best way to experience Thai massage is just to have it. Yeah. And then realize, oh, I feel relaxed and refreshed afterwards. That's usually the, the two things. It's... Um, in in our in in little Columbus, Ohio, you know, I my push has always been that our work in Thai massage here is about relaxation and education. Those are the yep. two things that we really want to focus on: is helping people relax because we all need to know how to do that. Yep. And it doesn't seem to be in a very uh, um, we know how to do it, but we kind of lose track of it. It's like so. I have the new puppy at home. <laughs> One of the first things that that the trainer had us teach was settle you know and so what we do is we would let them romp and pray and romp and play and romp and play and then we would go over and we'd get them and we'd hold them and we'd say settle as we stroke them and get them and and so they learn oh this is what the nervous system feels like you know that puppy's not consciously thinking this but (laughs) this is what the nervous system feels like to settle Mm. and I tell you what that has been gold to Mm. be able to work with him like he he will get all riled up hearing a dog bark or whatever and I'll just look at him and say jack settle and he knows he knows exactly what that means and oh okay that means i do this and so so this is like Thai massage is is the the settle yeah (laughs) you know to be able to do that and then the other thing that is fantastic about um Thai massage is that when the well-trained and well-experienced practitioner is moving your body it's moving the joint in a particular way that you can't get to on your own yeah. because when you do when you go there on your own you're contracting the muscles mm-hmm. and when you are um, having someone else move it that's the educational piece oh I understand so this is the movement that affects my low back ah I mm-hmm. get it and so there's I always ask people when we're done with a session, do you feel relaxed? Which is inevitably a yes. And then, um, or at least more so than I walked in, depending, right, on, right, depending yes. on where they are in their lives. <laughs> and and then my second question is always, what did you learn? They always want to know for me, okay, so what did you find out about my body? And Which is interesting for me, but, but it's more important for them to understand what they learned about their own body so that yeah. they, they get it. Oh, so this particular movement that I make all the time when I, you know, when... We don't do it so much anymore, thank goodness, because our phones are so thin that we can't do it. But that movement when you would bring your shoulder Ugh. up to your ear to hold your phone, yeah, you know, that that's a habit pattern that we have. That Then eventually, after you do that, you know, 50 times a day, that's going to affect that repetitive stress in your shoulder. And so so it's that kind of stuff that, that hopefully people begin to unravel and uncover for themselves. Yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> So when you are, um, and th- so selfishly I'm asking this because when trying to explain Thai yoga massage to people, um, they, when I try to explain, you know, and I'm, I'm working on opening up your hips and your joints and things like that, mm-hmm. it sounds painful to them. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, because, you know, and, and so when I went through the um, level one with you, talking about, um, you know, we, I think you instructed us not necessarily to say, you know, would you like more pressure? Yeah, no, um, I never asked that. Because we're, we're working towards, and I think this is, you know, one of my, the aspects of what I try to bring to yoga, anti-yoga massage, is trying to avoid that, um, I'm just going to call it American, I'm sure other people do this, but this sort of American thing of, like, if it hurts, that means I'm probably working on it. No pain, no gain. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not, um, yeah. <laughs> And that drives me crazy because that's how you injure yourself. Right, right. You know, you can gently you open can something up. You may not injure yourself, but right. you can injure yourself, certainly, with that mindset. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, trying to explain to somebody that, you know, the, pur- the purpose isn't to hurt yourself. Right, right. And to right. feel 
pain. So that that goes back to yoga sutras directly, and this isn't necessarily Thai massage, but this is more of yoga lifestyle. Hayam Dukam Anagatam. That's one of the, the the yoga sutras, and and it essentially means suffering that can be avoided should be avoided. I mean, duh, it, right, right. But but we do it to ourselves all the time. Yep. You know, we do it all. Uh, you know, like. Oh, I'm just going to go on that person's social media site just to see what they're doing. You know, uh-huh. well, we know why we're doing it. We're doing it because there's this, it's like, it's like picking a scab. Like you can't leave it alone. You can't leave it alone. And so, so it's, it's, it's a pattern, you know, it's a samskara that we, that we've developed in ourselves over what, and we all have them. It's not bad that we have them. We just have them. We're human beings. We have them. And so, so there's this, this, um, tendency i think as human beings that we're gonna do the thing that actually will cause us more suffering because yep. there's some short-term gain or some short-term pleasure or you know whatever it is like oh pizza tastes so good so i'm gonna <laughs> eat all 11 slices and then tomorrow yep. i'm gonna feel terrible but right now it's gonna be pleasurable so heyam dukam anagatam i like that suffering that can be avoided should be avoided <laughs> that's fantastic <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, and it's funny, like, looking back on some of these ancient writings and these ancient texts, like, the, they're so applicable to now because they were so simple. Because we're humans. Yeah, right. We haven't stopped being humans. Yeah, you don't need to have yeah. social media 2,000 years ago for these things to be, I mean, th- these things still happen. We're always going to do the same thing. We're still having a human experience. Yeah. We're still being, you know, who we are as human beings. We yeah. still have pattern and pattern that is harmful, pattern that is beneficial. And it, one of the things I thought was so interesting um, recently that I was learning from, from my teacher is, is you know, we have this idea sometimes. So, so in the yoga world, sometimes we, we talk about this term samskara. I mentioned it a, a, a few minutes ago. And samskara is a pattern. You know, there's mm-hmm. just a pattern of something that we do. And, and the idea isn't that we get rid of all samskaras. That's right. not going to happen to us in our lifetime. You know, what, what we do is we replace the when we're doing yoga we're essentially replacing some scars that we have with a yoga samskara mm-hmm. we're replacing it with a different pattern so that it's a more beneficial pattern a pattern that releases tension in your low back a pattern that um helps you avoid eating at 8 p.m. at night because you know that you don't digest well you know like all these cuz we know them mm-hmm. but we don't necessarily do them right so and yeah. Okay. So what does yoga mean to you? Where is oh, yoga in your life? Where is yoga in my life? So, so what a great question. And you know, it's funny because I feel like the more I learn about yoga, I started studying yoga back in 2001. So no, 1999. I took my first class in 1999. And, and I feel like over the years, like it's one of those things where you're like, Oh, I know what it is. And then you learn something more. You're like, I don't know what it is. Yeah. And then you, and then you're like, oh, okay, now I understand it. I, and then you're like, no, I don't understand it. And so, <laughs> so, um, it, it's it more or less, it's a lifestyle. It's a way of approaching life. It's a way. It's it's having tools for me at this point. And the 2018 version of my understanding of it is that we have these specific tools that we can use to help alleviate the suffering of our human experience in any particular given circumstance. And one of the things that Gary always says is set a direction for the future. So not only are you, are you, you know, working with whatever it is that you have at a particular moment, but you're also, you know, nudging the big, large boat of your life in a particular direction. You're still Mm going to be, you know, overcome with water and hearing, you know, all this. You know, my mom's still dead, you know, like she's not coming back just because I practice yoga, but it will help me deal with the grief that I have over, over that kind of stuff. So, so in, and then in practical terms, I mean, that's kind of a broad, broad scope there, but in practical terms, you have asana, which is for your, you know, primarily for the physical body, pranayama, which is primarily for your, your, we could say our physiological body, energy body, to get terms like what's your aura and all that. And it doesn't mean that it just means, you know, how well do you sleep at night? How well do you digest your food? How well do you do those sorts of things? And you can integrate asana and pranayama together and meditation. 
And then, of course, there's there's intention and there's there's ritual. And and if it fits in your life, there's prayer. And prayer doesn't necessarily mean a religious connotation of prayer, but but a way of uh, communing, if you will, with something that's beyond your little self. Mm -hmm. And so all of those tools, you know, are 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 helpful to us. And so it's it's. A good yoga practice is one that is appropriate for you, given whatever you're going through. Mm-hmm. What is primarily, what is your, what is your primary complaint? You know, and your primary complaint may be, I'm 30 pounds overweight. You know yeah. what I mean? That may be your primary complaint. Okay, so let's use the tools of yoga to help you address that. You know, is and, and maybe, maybe it's a situation where you're not going to lose those 30 pounds, and so you have to deal with how that feels to be in that body. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe it's a condition where, yeah, if you get out and move, your yoga practice might be that you swim every day. Mm -hmm. You know, that might be your yoga practice. That could be your asana. It it could be your asana, but it doesn't have to be your asana. It could be meditation. Yeah. So, 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 so broad, broad picture, but also very applicable tools. Yeah. And when you, so you said you started... Um, you had your first yoga practice in 99. 1999 on the banks of the Yampa River in Steamboat, Colorado. Wow. I know, right? <laughs> pretty cool. Huh? What was that kind of a class? Um, you know, this is such a funny story. Um, so that was a Vinny yoga class. Mm. And I didn't know it at the time. At the time, I just went to whatever yoga class was available at the time. I, that's usually what it boils down to. Sure. If you're going to go to to a class somewhere, usually it boils down to, okay, so I have Tuesday nights available. What class is available right. on Tuesday night? I mean, yeah. that's just how life runs. And so, so I took this class in 1999, and then I moved from Steamboat to New York, and I started... Um, training with Gary in 2002 so three years later I started wow. training with him and then and then it was a year into the training so our training program was two and a half years long it was a very okay. intensive long long training program and about a year into that program it dawned on me and I can't even remember what how it happened but I finally realized that um the very first class I took was a teacher he had trained and oh, wow. I didn't make that connection until nearly four years later. And at that point, he hadn't trained very many teachers because uh, he lived in Hawaii. Mm. And so the only way to to train with him was you had to go to Hawaii. Poor, poor you. Right, yes. You had to go to Suffer. Hawaii. And you had to go to Hawaii like five or six times. Like wow. you had to like to actually get a, a thorough training with him. You had to make this That's a commitment. enormous financial and time commitment. And so there weren't that many teachers that he had trained because because of that. And yeah. I just happened to have have been in, you know, I mean, yay for divine intervention and yeah. those things where there it just happens. And so that was that was my first class. And I didn't actually after I had taken that class with, with oh gosh, I, Robin, I think may have been her name. I don't think that's right. I can't even remember. But, um, but then um, I, when I moved to New York, I ended up, you know, I was in my my early to mid twenties at that point. So of course I got into Ashtanga. That was the sure. thing that, yes. that, you, that you do. Yes. You're, you're gonna, and so, so I had I had done a lot of um, of training or not training but a lot of of practice with other ashtangis and and loved it because it was you know appropriate and good for for my body at that point and and I was working at a um holistic health retreat center and I had asked the president that of the of that retreat center who happened to be a founding member of Kripalu so he was somebody that was again really really steeped in yoga I said his name is Dina Bandhu, and I said, "Hey, Dina Bandhu, um, I I want to study yoga, but I want to study so I want to study with somebody who has breadth and depth. Mm-hmm. I don't want somebody who just like knows a particular fad style right. of the moment." And um, he, I said, "Who should I train with?" And he, of course, said me, which was hilarious. <laughs> and and I said, "But you don't do a teacher training." And he said, "I know." And so he said, "Well, I think that you would like." Gary Crasso. I think that he would be somebody that you that has what you're looking for. And um, Gary happened to be coming to Omega. I was at Omega. Um, happened to be coming to Omega the next week. Like this was a Thursday that we had this conversation. Wow. And Gary was coming to Omega the next week. 
And so, uh, and, and part of our compensation was that we got to take one five-day workshop over the mm. summer. Okay. And so, as long as the teacher was okay with it. And so I went to my boss at the time. I was like, hey, I decided what, what workshop I want to take. She goes, oh, cool. I said, it starts Monday. She's like, <laughs> Surprise. She's like all righty then. I guess that's <laughs> what you're doing. She was awesome. And so, um, so I took it, and I can remember what he said to me. And again, this goes back to the Vinny yoga of it, of the applicable to the person who is in, in that set of circumstances in their life. And he didn't say this to me directly. He said this kind of to the, to the group, but, um, he, and this is a Sufi saying, he said, he said, at some point in your practice, you have to pick and stick. You can't dig a, this is the Sufi saying, you can't dig a 100 foot well by digging 101 foot holes <laughs> and what I had been doing was what you should do when you're in a circumstance like that where I had been basically bellying up to the yoga buffet that was Omega and trying a little bit of this and 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 that just hit me perfectly I was like that's exactly what I've been doing but if I want to study really study then pick and stick you know don't dig 101 foot holes and say and expect to get water you right. know, like stay with one thing and, and really go for it. And, and so I did, that was his marketing to me, I guess. <laughs> That's <worked>. great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and I'm, so I'm interested when people decide that they want to teach yoga, um, practicing yoga and having your own yoga practice is fantastic. And I recommend it to everybody. Um, Choosing to teach yoga is a different beast, and I'm interested in how and or why you came to that decision to teach. Oh, well, I actually came to the decision to teach early, early on in my practice, and that was... Because I had this notion, so so this again, this is in my early 20s, trying to figure out what I was going to do in my life and who I was going to be, and I had this vision, I think that many, many people who come to yoga have the same vision of wanting to have some sort of wellness center, mm -hmm. and which is, which is why I went to Omega in the first place. I wanted to learn how they did it so right. that I could then do it myself. Right. And so... Um, so one of the things that I wanted to have in the, this wellness center, which eventually, and this, that's where Reedon eventually came from. The name Reedon came from that time in my life. And, okay. and um, so I thought, okay, well, we have to have yoga there because that's the thing that you do. At our, you know? and, and so that was, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it, it was a good decision looking back on it, you know, 20 years later, it was a good decision, but it wasn't from some noble, deep, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was because I, I, I want to have a wellness center and one of the things at the wellness center needs to be yoga. So I need to get a, I need to become a yoga teacher. <laughs> yeah, you right, know, like yeah. it was the, really that simple. And, sure. and so, and all these years later, I questioned that decision. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I Why should have been an accountant. I, I should have been, I should have been a doctor. Come on. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and so now you have this business. Has your has your business always been here in Columbus? Uh, no. So so when I first finished my teacher training, um, I that was in two thousand and four, and so I started in two thousand and four training in Thai massage. And when I and again, you know these these reasons why we do something very rarely end up being the reason why we continue doing them. But yep. I. I I started training in Thai massage because I had just completed this huge, long teacher training in, in Vinny Yoga. And still, even all these years later, what is 14 years later from, from finishing that training, um, it's still that in the public consciousness, yoga is something you do as a physical exercise with a large group of people. That's just kind of the public understanding of it, or at least, and, and it's been great for, for a business model for many people. That's been a sure. really great thing. But um, yoga is best taught one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. you know, with a, with a, with an experienced 
qualified teacher, it's best taught one on one. And 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 I see some change coming about with that, and, yep. and which is good and wonderful, and actually allows the yoga teachers to make a living, which yeah. is a good thing. Um, so. So, but way back when, when I was doing that, I was like, okay, well, how am I going to convince people to study with me one-on-one? Well, if I have them come in for Thai massage and they learn something about their body, <laughs> right. ha, 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 right. they have a little Mr. Burns. <laughs> yes, we knew, ha, ha. So then, then they, I will convince them to, and then I just fell in love with Thai massage and, yep. and they just became two different things. So that's interesting. That, that kind of are paralleling along. And I, and I still think that that, that is a good combination uh for everyone and i that that having massage does different things than your yoga practice can do i do think the yoga practice needs to be the foundation Mm -hmm. i have a lot of clients that will come in and be like stretch me i'm like i can do that but but it's the difference between it's the whole you know give a man a fish to eat for a day versus teach Teach a man a fish fish. yeah and so so the yoga practice is teaching someone how to fish yep they still need to come in for massage and and every you know i I think everyone needs to have that. It's like going out to dinner. Like you still want, yeah. you still want to go out to dinner and have somebody make the food, take it away when you're done, and clean the dishes. That's an awesome experience. That's massage. You know, yeah. That's that's so, and 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 also it again back to that whole relaxation piece. That's why we love going out to dinner so much. We don't yeah. have to do that work because right. we work all this other stuff. But it doesn't mean that you don't learn how to cook. Right. You know, that's still an essential thing to do. Like, right. Is there something that you find is like the primary struggle that you're working with? To well, the sort primary of struggle with all of us is what we're what we currently are identified with that we think is who we are, yeah. but is not who we are. You know, you just you you took a photo of this yeah. book, so I want to I want to bring it up. So this is my my current favorite book right now. This is Pandit Rajmani Tigunat, which is he's the um, current um, spiritual head of the Himalayan Institute, which is over oh, sure. in um, in uh, in. Uh, Pennsylvania and I in his introduction well there's a preface but then there's this introduction this is the last paragraph which I just think this is so beautiful yeah and this is so the book by the way is the commentary on Patanjali's yoga sutras and there he's got two of these books so far this book is the first chapter of the yoga sutra and then the second book is the second chapter of the yoga sutra which is fascinating so. because if you look at the yoga they're like literally 10 pieces of paper oh yeah they're so short <laughs> they're so short they're so short but then yeah. there's books and books and books and there's yeah. commentaries on commentaries because we're complex yeah um so anyways but but i just thought this was lovely so this is he says the message of patanjali in the yoga sutra is simple and straightforward Remove the veil of darkness and allow your intrinsic luminosity to illuminate both your inner and outer worlds. Be free here and now and experience your everlasting self-luminous joy. The goal of yoga is nothing less than that. In this light, I present this commentary to you. So, so be free here and now and experience your everlasting self-luminous joy. The goal of yoga is nothing less than that. That's way different than getting flexible hamstrings, right? Yes. <laughs> so It sure is. Uh, but flexible hamstrings might be part of that. Sure. You know? If that brings you luminous joy. Well, if that is, <laughs> if that, if, if your legs are bothering you to the point where you're in, you're in, continual annoyance and pain and you and you can't do other things then yeah you know that's that's what asana is for is to feel good in your body right but um i love this this is this is this is this will make our our talk r-rated one of the things that gary (laughs) says is is you're not going to become a kind wonderful amazing human being because you can do lotus it while you're in headstand you can still be an asshole yeah. doing lotus in in, in headstand. Yep. You know, like the, the depth of yoga is not in being able to put your head, heels behind your head. And that's wonderful and yeah. good if that's appropriate for your body. But now we're seeing all this, thankfully, seeing all this information coming out about yep. people that have been so pro asana for so long and there's that one woman who just recently had a hip surgery mm-hmm. that it was a, you know like thank god that's coming out like get get it you yeah know? so um but what was your question why well, i went off on a tangent know. about about pandit rajmani but um but that's yeah that's that's the depth so so yeah so so the question to that is where are you misidentified 
Where yeah. do you think that, you know, like we're talking about 100 and 115 yeah. percent, where, where are you caught so that you're identified with this particular thing that you are like, I'm tight, yeah. you know, that's what it is, but actually your range of motion in your hip is, is fantastic. Right. So, so where's the identification that you're tight, you know, is it, you know, What's your goal? Is mm-hmm. your goal to be able to put your heels behind? We'll go back to that one. Your heels yeah. behind your head, and if that's so, what's yeah. what's behind that intention? What yeah. is it that Why? you think you're gonna get by doing that? Because again, there's no pot of gold when you find that. There's no instant enlightenment. There's no um, suddenly I'm an awesome human being. <laughs> you know, it may be that you recognize that. Oh, maybe the maybe what you're really recognizing is that you're pushing yourself too hard. Mm-hmm. That's a fantastic thing to recognize yep. in yoga, you know. And and so so this uh, cult of asana, what mm-hmm. you call it, you know, this idea that there's there's some there's some achievement that we need to to find in asana that is the be all end all of yoga is a myth. Yeah, it's a myth. Yeah, and and that's harsh and hard for some people to hear, but also necessary. Mm-hmm. That's the, you know my hairdresser saying that style doesn't look good <laughs> on you, honey. <laughs> you look like a mushroom. <laughs> right, right, right. When people t- you know tell me, should I come to the beginners class? Should I come to? Can I can I go into something called intermediate yeah. or whatever? I don't care. Do whatever you want, but yeah. be mindful. But the but the answer is that the the the, I don't know, definition of a beginner has nothing to do with your, your capability to get into a certain pose. Yeah. It's your ability to stay present and mindful in your pose or in whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. So if you're in scorpion pose, but you're thinking about your grocery list. Right. Right. Then that's not yoga. You're doing acrobatics. Correct. Which is beautiful and an amazing thing, but it's not yoga. Correct. Right. Or you can be sitting in an easy, comfortable position and completely it's mindful. Totally present. That is past being a beginner in my that's mind. That's an advance. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. I think that's where, you know, my frustrations lie with um, the pictures, the the... You know, the really cool, twisty, bendy poses. They're awesome. They look so good, but it's so interesting. <laughs> I, you know, there is a, there the, a pair of pants that had pictures of, of yogi positions, the photographs <laughs> on them. And I was looking at them, and I didn't buy them because they were 100% backbends. Oh, yeah. Because backbends are beautiful. It's amazing. And But I was like, that is not what I want to advertise. Yeah. That's not yoga. Yeah. And I mean, it is, but I, that's I mean, not that's, only, that's not only, yeah, like, yeah, you don't, you're not better at yoga again, because let's say that you're in scorpion with your head, <laughs> with your, you know, like whatever it is, yeah. whatever it is. So, and that's, again, that's our human nature to think that, that, that there is some achievement that we're trying to get to. And then once we get to that, we can check that off our list and therefore we've mastered it. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you want to have that kind of goal then maybe your goal needs to be you know your breath work Mm -hmm. that I mean that would be a a, at least a far more beneficial experience of yoga is 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 so you know can you can you do a 10 second inhale a 10 second hold a 10 second exhale a 10 second hold for 10 breaths Mm -hmm. you know that would be an interesting one yeah. Not if you have COPD. Not, you know, like... <laughs> Contraindications. Contraindications are. Um, <laughs> so, and that's where, that's where it's, it's, you know, I, I, I'm hopeful, I guess, in, in, in terms of yoga in, in America that as some of these bigger organizations become more organized and we have these good standards of education that we can recognize, okay, so if I really want to learn the depth of yoga I'm going to find a well-qualified teacher and and study with them and invest you know invest in in this long long term personal study which is amazing and wonderful so how would you recommend that somebody find a teacher like that 
This is not this is not even shameless self promotion for either of us. No, 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 no. Well, that's where I think that it's helpful to have those um, those big organizations, and there are certainly you know lots of arguments against what they're doing. But that's that's all. You know, I think an organization in general is does the association actually help the people that that um, that it's seeing that it's helping. But I think that going to those websites and looking under yoga alliance who is a qualified teacher and finding it's like it blows my mind that people you know if you were going to have um if you were going to have let's say you were going to have a surgery let's say you were going to have your shoulder replaced you would research your surgeon at mm-hmm. least i hope you would research your surgeon and 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 if you had the choice, you could choose somebody who's done it yeah. maybe 500 times. Right. So that rather than, I mean, there's there's certainly benefits to those that are fresh out of medical school and, and all of that. And they might do a great job, but... They got to practice somewhere, They got to practice somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But but research. And so is it, I'm hoping that's what, the, what will eventually get across to the general population is go to the International Association of Yoga Therapists and plug in search Columbus, Ohio and find out who's here. Yep. There's obviously more than just me. There's other fantastic yoga therapists here in town. And so, so, and then if you, if you want to not do yoga therapy, but you want to just do a yoga teacher, find out who are your E-R-Y-T 500 teachers. Who right. are those people that, that are that are committed to their own understanding? You know, I mean, I was a 25-year-old yoga teacher. I've been there. I've done yep. it. But I can tell you as a 44-year-old yoga teacher, vast difference between what I would teach people then and what I would teach people now. Yep. It doesn't mean that that a freshly minted yoga teacher isn't a qualified and, and wonderful teacher, but there's a difference in sure. the experience. And so so going to as a as a as an accountant who needs help with their low back pain and shoulder tension, go to the websites, go to the national websites and look and see, okay, who's qualified in the town that I live in? Yeah. And I don't think many people know about Yoga Alliance um, or any of those or the the the, t- the yeah mm-hmm. um, you know I, that's what I think is sort of ironic about you know even bothering to put the the little emblem on my website like that doesn't mean anything to the average people right to yoga teachers that means something right because right. we know and what that, it means again that's edu- that comes back to education right yeah right. Um, but, and so not only researching and finding somebody that has the designation, the experience and so forth, but also spending time with that person. Yes. Oh, that's by far the most important one is, is when, when I have, like, if I have a friend that lives in Denver and wants to find a yoga class, I'll tell them, you know, go to a bunch of different classes and go more than once because you're best teacher may be having a really crappy day yeah. the first day you go and yeah. you may it may not be it may be that that's the best teacher for you but there but go more than once and then and then find the one that resonates with you because if you don't if you don't have some resonance with that person you're not going to learn anyways yeah you know there's no so so there's lots of different there's lots of different factors to think about and of course you know there's there's the matter of well it's got to fit my schedule yeah. Which is true. And ask yourself, reflect on what your priorities are in life. Right. That's one of the biggest things that that, I, that is helpful um, for my students to recognize. What's my priority? I'm a single mom. So my priority oftentimes is is taking care of my my little family that I mm-hmm. have. And so so that some you know, for this period and in, in time in my life, sometimes some of the self-care things that I really need have to be second place in order to make sure the child is fed and the dogs are walking, you know, like all of that. Like yeah. I get it more than, than most people would think. I totally understand how, how difficult it is to make, um, taking care of yourself a priority, but look on it, you know, what is, what is your priority? You know, when you're, when you're sitting around, you know, binging on Netflix and eating potato chips, what's your priority? 
that may be the perfect thing to finish to, this bag to or finish this bag <laughs> and that whole season. Yes. And, <laughs> yeah. and then I am an amazing human. Uh, yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, so I'm interested. Um, your, uh, how are you raising your daughter in a lifestyle? Are you raising your daughter in a lifestyle of yoga? Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, I assume you are, but so, um, the answer I have to that is my mom was a Spanish teacher mm-hmm. and I took French. <laughs> you know, That's like awesome. it's so like I can't be her teacher. Yeah, I'm not going to be her teacher. It, it, it. I hope that her being exposed to it, like she is. I mean, she's been to tons of my classes just out of necessity. Sure. Um, but, uh, but I, I will, I will never be her yoga teacher. Yeah. So I, you just sort of lead by example. This yeah, is, this is how you are. Yeah. yeah, as best I can. And and it's interesting to hear her when she. When she talks about yoga, it's interesting to see what she's picked up and what she hasn't. Yeah. And and so that that's been interesting. If she if she takes to it and she wants to do it, fantastic. I will help her find the best teacher for her. Yeah. And maybe that will be me at some point. You know. I mean, that's sure. that's that's a uh, that's in my own personal lineage. That's uh, Desa Kachar was Krishnamacharya's son. So but the interesting thing about that, which if if anyone's interested in in delving into Krishnamacharya's life. There's a fantastic book um, that who's oh crap I can't no, I said the name of the and the name of the book is gone but um, but we'll put it as a web yes link. We'll be, there'll be a link on the website for that. <laughs> it's the life and times of Krishnamacharya, but that's not the title. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that Deskajar talked about in there was that he didn't want to learn anything from his dad for long. He became an engineer, mm. and then he eventually came back to it. And Krishnamacharya was a devout uh, Hindu, and and when when Dasukachar came back to him, he said, "Okay, I'm ready to learn yoga. I want to learn it from you, but I don't want to, I don't want any god business to it." <laughs> and so you know, it's like how yeah. it's the Vini Yoga. How do you how do you adapt it to the person who is practicing? Mm-hmm. How does a devout Hindu father who spent his life studying yoga teach his engineer son about yoga who doesn't want anything to do with god yeah you know like you you gotta that which makes which actually is then eventually becomes the enjoyable part of as the teacher yeah because then okay how do i do this This yeah challenge in front of me how do i do this how do i teach someone who's a runner Mm -hmm. that has you know chronically tight hips how do i how do i teach them with out them ever giving up their running. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or right. here's a here's a different one. You know, an architect that works at a drafting table mm. that has shoulder tension and yep. repetitive stress. How do you they're not gonna give up their job. Right. So how do you adapt what you you know, how can you minimize the damage, I think is is often the time the what we're what we're working on. So it's interesting. Yeah. You have to meet people where they are. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and try to help the student also recognize that we're starting with where you're at right now. Right. I don't I don't expect you to be able to touch your toes. If right. you want to touch your toes, then bend your knees. Yeah, right. Or that's something that we're that's a fantastic goal to work towards. And let's let's figure out why it is that you want to do that. Is it a worthwhile goal? And if you deem it a worthwhile goal, then let's work towards it. Right. And at some point you may figure out that that's not a worthwhile goal. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that can change. It's changeable every day, you know, that our yoga practice suits us, not the other way around. And so you have you have seen a change in your own practice. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it, and I hope it will continue to change. You yeah. know, I hope that that I will be adaptable enough and and um, and be able to to see what's happening for real. And I have my own yoga therapist. Like yeah. I don't, I don't yoga therapize myself because yep. I have my own personal blinders. I have someone that I work with that, that can say, um, no, that's your own cognitive bias that you can't see. Okay. All right. I hate you right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. So, so, but it's important, you know, yeah. it's really, it, it's, and it's a, you know, and yeah. So are there things that you might have removed from your personal practice that you did that you used to do decades ago? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, there, there was, you know, when I, when I was 
28 years old and doing asana. It was a very, I used to love scorpion. I loved mm-hmm. that posture. I thought that was like the best posture ever. I felt so strong and solid. Right. And those were things that I wanted and needed to feel at that point. I don't, I don't do that one anymore. Yeah. It's not one. And, and I don't miss it. It's not like, I feel like the depth of the yoga practice I have now, my, my personal yoga practice at this point is far more about chanting and meditation than mm-hmm. it is about asana. Yep. And, and for me, it's, you know, it's summertime right now. And, and in Columbus, Ohio, summertime means pool to me. I want to go swim. That will be my phys- my asana. I don't know. Asana is helpful, but that's not my main, my main physical exercise. I'd much rather get in the pool because we have like nine weeks of the year that we can actually do that. Right. So I want to, I want to take advantage of it and, and have my, the, the heart of my practice be, the chanting and the meditation, because that what actually makes me be a sane mother. (laughs) And that's important. Which is an important thing to apparently her. Right. Right. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Kids. So kids. Um, Is there anything else that you wanted to bring up? I would just encourage people to give it a try. Yep. You know, that's the main thing is just to give it a try and, and research, you know, who you're going to, what, and what the depth is that they're teaching and and go to the depth that you're capable of at any given moment right you know that changes just because i'm into chanting and and meditation doesn't mean that that my student is and and i can't put that on my student if right. they if they really just want a release of shoulder tension great let's do yep. that because it's a fantastic place to be so yeah wonderful excellent well thank you for your time namaste i appreciate it namaste Well, I hope you enjoyed that discussion as much as we enjoyed having it. Please do check out her website, readinyoga.com. Also, check out the web link for this. I will have um, links that you can go to check out, IAYT, as well as Yoga Alliance, so you can do your own further research. If you did like this, please click like or subscribe. And consider going to the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash yoga happiness to become a supporter to help continue my efforts to bring information about everyday yoga. Um, Stay tuned. I've got interviews that are being edited right now. Well, not right now. I'm recording this. I'm going to hop on editing those in a moment. All right. Have a great week. My newest favorite term is bio spaceship. How can we work on your bio spaceship today? (laughs)